In our Monarch Butterfly series, this is our fourth video. This is the internal anatomy of the caterpillar. This is a Monarch caterpillar munching out. Notice how flexible. It has an exoskeleton of chitin, which can sometimes be like armor, for example, on a beetle. But on many larval forms, it's a softer, gentler kind of chitin. Children are aware that a caterpillar is soft and squishy. They'll frequently call it a worm, which uh, represents a body form uh, filled with fluid. No bones, no shells, no hard parts in the body of a caterpillar. Inside the body of this elongated, worm-like structure, the monarch caterpillar, lots of internal organs. You can see in this diagram uh, different colors represent different systems. We're going to examine each of these systems and try and make sense out of what goes on inside of a caterpillar. The first system that we'll talk about will be the digestive system represented by green and the malpigian tubules of the excretory system which are represented by yellow. It's a complete digestive tube just like the human digestive system. From mouth, food is disassembled all the way down this tube, finally exits from the anus. Along the way, mostly plant material is digested. Carbohydrate material is reduced from larger molecules to smaller molecules and absorbed into the internal system. Some fats and some proteins. Milkweed plants are toxic. When the caterpillar eats these poisonous plants, it doesn't hurt the caterpillar. The caterpillar, however, sequesters these chemicals into its fat cells and transfers this through the chrysalis into the adult. So milkweed plants are loaded with poisons that are especially harmful to vertebrates. The excretory system, represented by the Malpigian tubules, will collect fluids from all parts of the body and collect and concentrate them into this area of the digestive system. So the Malpigian tubules then will collect nitrogenous wastes from body fluids and concentrate the material mostly into uric acid, which will find its way in between the foregut and the midgut and exit from the body with the other material that goes from the digestive system. Those two systems are important for the metabolism of the caterpillar. This is the nervous system of the caterpillar represented by blue. The nervous system begins, you might say, at the brain. This is the upper end of the nervous system. This is really just a large aggregation of neurons. And each of these little lumps along this ventral nerve cord, which is a double cord, rather than a single cord like in humans. Humans have a single cord and it goes down the dorsal side or the back side of the humans. So there's a difference between the caterpillar and the human nervous system. Each of these little structures is kind of like a little brain in that particular segment. We've got a dozen or so of these ganglia along the ventral nerve cord of the caterpillar. Up here at the head end is optimistically called the brain. It doesn't have a lot of functions, doesn't have a lot of analysis. To be a caterpillar you don't have to be really smart. But a lot of the sensory information is taken care of up here in the head by that superganglion. Uh, taste and vision are in that area. The caterpillar has six little omatidia on one side and six on the other. The omatidia are light receptors. I guess we could call them eyes, but they're incredibly primitive. They have one little lens and a couple of cells that go to the brain, and that's about it. They can interpret light from dark, and that's about as far as the so-called eyes go on the caterpillar. This is the monarch caterpillar circulatory system 
in red. Red is misleading because red denotes oxygen in the bloodstream. There's no oxygen in monarch caterpillar blood. Oxygenation is another system, but blood just carries on other blood functions like carrying antibodies here and there and hormones, etc. Humans and other vertebrates have what's known as a closed circulatory system. It's a heart and a bunch of little tubes that run out all over the body. Most invertebrates, except earthworms and their relatives, have an open blood system. They have a heart, and this is the heart in this larval form of a butterfly, and it pumps, but since it's an open system, it doesn't have little vessels. It's pumped at a low, low pressure. The blood just oozes in and out of openings in this circulatory tube. So this is the heart with holes in it. It's an achy, breaky heart full of holes. The blood oozes based on the envelope squeezing or relaxing in and out of these openings. No system of vessels, no little tubes carrying blood here and there. It just oozes in the soup of the internal anatomy of this caterpillar. This is the respiratory system of the caterpillar. It's an important companion system with the circulatory system. Remember the circulatory system, there was no oxygen involved. Here's where the oxygen exchange occurs. Oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, through these little body openings here, these little circular structures called spiracles. They bring air into the internal anatomy through a system called trachea, branch from little tubes to smaller tubes to very small tubes. It's at the tubule level where the oxygen carbon dioxide exchange occurs. Oxygen in for metabolic needs internally and the carbon dioxide as a waste material exits through these same tubules. Remember again, this does not occur in the blood. It occurs in these little tracheal tubes and through the spiracles of the respiratory system. This isn't a system, but these are wing buds. These are congregations of cells that are waiting their turn to develop into wings. So you have two pairs of wing buds in the caterpillar. They serve no function, but in the chrysalis, they will literally explode into the wings for the adult butterfly. Unique to the Lepidoptera, the butterflies and moths, is this special gland in the caterpillar, the silk gland. It produces a silk, silk strands, makes a mat that the larval stage can attach to and metamorphose into the pupa stage. We started with the envelope, then we went to the digestive system and the excretory system, the nervous system, the circulatory system, followed by the respiratory system, and then the silk gland and the wing buds. Now you can see all of these things together is complicated. They all have to work together in unison. It's not just a bunch of separate systems operating independently. They need to be coordinated. They need to function all together in this little caterpillar body that's preparing for its next step into the chrysalis.